Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. This is your captain speaking. Super excited to have somebody on today. It's going to be talking all about marketing effectiveness. I've got Nick Milne, who is uh, the CEO of Go Ignite and Ignition Room. But before that, Nick was very much involved on a lot of different uh, client side of, of stuff. Looking at your profile, Nick, I've seen that you were working at Barclays Bank, Sainsbury's Bank, O2, Samsung Electronics, to name just a few. So you've got yeah. quite a lot of experience in those monstrous organizations, which is super interesting. I'm looking forward to hear more about that. But uh, welcome, Nick. Really happy to have you. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Pleasure to be here. Sure. So tell us a little bit about what you are doing at Go Ignite and give us a little bit of a flavor of the, the ignition room as well. Super interested to hear about that. Yeah, so Go Ignite, we call ourselves marketing effectiveness change makers. And essentially, we help brands and agencies build a strong effectiveness culture. And cult culture is important because culture is around kind of the ways of working. And effectiveness is about value. So we help organizations really work out how they can unlock that value through the marketing they're doing. So that's kind of one side of the business. The second side of the business is the ignition room, which is our marketing effectiveness community. And as you kind of touched on, I've kind of worked in some big kind of organizations previously and set up effectiveness functions in them. But the thing that I wish I had was a community of people that I could learn from and go and share challenges with in a non-competitive way so that I could learn how to do effectiveness better. And that's exactly what the Ignition Room does. We're building a community of marketers and insight folk from brands and agencies so that they can learn from each other and build a network. And we run events, we go live, we challenge people to you know, talk about what they're working on with effectiveness and we, we share learnings and help people. So it's a, it's a super exciting community. Nice, how many people are in the community? Uh, we've got about 100. Oh, nice. Nice. From all over or UK focused or where, where are most people? Uh, you, can, you can come in from wherever you want to be. Primarily it's UK at the moment, but uh, we do work internationally as well. So we're, you know, we've got huge global domination ambitions. So, uh, so why not anywhere? Very good. <laughs> Very good. Is it, is it a paid model that people need to pay to be part of the community or how does it work? No, we've got, we've got a free, there is a paid bit, but that's a, that's a kind of hot off the press proposition that we're launching, but most of it is free where we run events, we run what we call effect, uh, ignition room huddles. So we'll kind of pick a debate, we'll pick a topic and we'll get 30, 40 people together. Um, we've got one coming up in Bristol um, at the end of this month where we're talking about how you can take a strong brand and put that through the line across all of your communications and experiences. So really kind of far down into kind of CRM and we've got a couple of big brands coming along to help talk and, and run the debate with us. So they're, you know, they're good events. They're good Very events. Cool. Very cool. And I guess most of the people from those uh, that are in within that community are from those larger brands probably, right? uh there's a there's a real mix actually so we we partner with the ipa on them and the ipa is the institute practice and is of advertising so we find that it's probably about kind of two-thirds one-third kind of agency and then their clients and and that's a really important part to it right because a lot of marketing is getting people working together to deliver better value and so the more that you can expose agencies to how their clients and brands think and how decisions are made then effectively you should be able to kind of you know understand the logic of decision making get braver work on the table and deliver better value so it's a, it's a real mix Nice, nice. Thanks for thanks for that. I also put the link in the comments or in the in the description as well, so people can. Amazing. It. That'd be great. Okay, explain marketing marketing effectiveness to me, right? So, like, yeah. there's so many elements to it. Let's take for example, you need to tell my mother what you do. So yeah. my mother has no idea about marketing effectiveness. So let's explain it to the audience, please. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's really simple. Marketing effectiveness is the value that marketing creates to an organization. It's about the money, you know, you've got marketing has got to deliver values to the business. But then sitting underneath that is effectiveness culture. And effectiveness culture is the process of how you create that value. So it's around the marketing activities and how you generate them. And we've got a framework that we, we use to help people understand the different elements of effectiveness culture. 
So there's four pillars. One is process, which is the day to day. What's the business challenge? What's marketing's role in tackling that challenge? What's the activities that you create? How do you activate them? How do you measure them? How do you prove the value? That's the kind of the always on cycle. And then we've got three supporting pillars where one is focus, which is around defining what effectiveness is to an organization. And that's important because that's around kind of organizational integration and alignment around the value that you should be creating for marketing effectiveness. Then there's the people side of things, which is are people on board? Do they buy into it? Are they trained? Do they know where their roles are? Do they know what their responsibilities are? And then there's the data, the tools and the measurement side, which is a critical bit of kind of generating that effectiveness intelligence to understand, well, how is your marketing working and how do you make it better in the future? Excellent. I, I like the structure to your answer there, by the way, especially around the culture piece, because it, it, well, it digs it, it, co- it covers all the bases, right? So yeah, I just, and I'm going to dig into this culture thing a little bit now as well. Like out of those four pillars there, what, what one is normally the most broken? <laughs> it's an excellent question i think i think there's been a real i'm gonna can i take a long way to answer yeah yeah question? please do please do. yeah go for i it. think i think a couple of years ago the answer would have been you need to get people on the focus side of things and getting people woken up to the value of what effectiveness is versus what efficiency is two different things the world of digital the world of how people work through covid people have gone easily more easily into the short-term route of working of i just need to get stuff done so efficiently i'm working and in my things that i'm doing and getting done they are individually working well so two years ago we need to kind of wake people up to start to kind of look out and think more about the organization the value that you're creating but the real challenge today is around the process and the ways of working because you can create the right effectiveness approach you can create all of your frameworks your measurements your analytics capabilities but unless you're changing how people make decisions and make that easy for them that's the hard bit because that's changing the day-to-day where does that where does that come from then who's then is it is it always coming from the top they always say the fish stinks from the head you know is that is that is that yeah. how, is it does it have to be sea level downwards how does that work it is much easier if you've got support, sea level downwards, to push the effectiveness agenda and, and change, bring, bring what you're creating into people's roles. But the reality is, if you're giving bottom up people new things to use, new tools to look at, new ways of understanding information, that's got to be bottom up because people have to accept it. And it's got to be done in a way which is helpful rather than judgmental. And where effectiveness goes wrong is when you're kind of acting a bit like a judge and a jury and you're saying, well, you did this and it didn't work. So therefore, you're not very good at what you did. But if you can kind of get more upstream and help people create well and give confidence that it works and then prove that it works, then it's much easier to get people on side and that whole kind of bottom up get involved in this. I can see how it helps me is a lot easier. Got it. Got it. I got a lot of the things I, I've, I've worked with um, a lot of e-commerce or retailers in the past. Right. Um, and I've, I've worked in the MarTech space for many years. And we, we, I, I used to work for an organization that did uh, marketing automation, but also did analytics, right. To understand if you're yeah. spending a dollar on marketing, what's that return? How does that look from a lifetime value perspective and the customer base, et cetera. Right. Yeah. What we always found was one of the core issues was like all these mega giant organizations retailers high street retailers from the uk you would believe that they would have everything that they'd have their shit together basically <laughs> probably the best way of putting it right when it came to data yeah. in particular you know where they're they're saying oh you know we we've got all the data and then when you dig into it the data is dispersed across numerous teams um across spreadsheets across programs or crms that they've created yeah. themselves that data mess like what are you coming across there when it comes to because that like the process thing i get that but the data yeah. itself to show that things are being effective like is yeah, that yeah. is that better nowadays than it once was or is it still a mess <laughs> uh, no I, I i think it's still i think it's still a mess i mean if you're a big global organization that operates in different markets 
you're going to have different data supplies. You can have different accuracy of data. And so it's, it, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest enablers of having a strong effectiveness approach. You can have the, you can have your vision, you can set out what you want to do. If you can't physically deliver that or create a picture which accurately helps take kind of opinion off the table and build consistent trust with performance and what you're saying, then it, you know, it, it, it's really hard to do. So a question for you on that as well is around the, the, the technologies now, again, on the market nowadays, there are thousands, tens of thousands of pieces of technology yeah. to help you with all of those pieces, with all those bits, right? Yeah. Do you find at all that there are technologies there that actually help align? So if, let's say, for example, there's a CRM technology or a, a CDP, so customer data platform technology, that's able to take all of those customer data points based on all of the marketing interactions that are happening, et cetera. Yeah. And that, does that help then align teams across numerous different departments? I think, um, in short, the answer is yes. In, in long, it, it helps fix part of the picture. I, I think the whole measurement side of things, and this is why we kind of talk about the process as well as the other pillars. So, you know, measurement is a different pillar to the process. You need to build the picture and how it aligns to what you're doing. And they're two different things. Because so normally it's your data team, it's your analytics team, it's your digital function that builds the picture of what's happening based on the data you've got. And your marketers are sitting over here and what they are building is invisible. So you've got to join, you've got to join that up somehow. And that's that's where we're kind of really excited in the industry at the moment is how do you make all of that visible so that you're not just thinking about data in terms of the we did this, we can prove it happened, but actually you suddenly got really clear visibility of everything that you have done and everything that's coming up. So you can have a much richer conversation enabled by technology around, we're seeing this, have we got confidence that what the business is gonna do is help overcome these challenges or not? What do we need to do differently about it? So I think there are absolutely some technologies in the industry which are, you know, they're not just data related, as we kind of got used to them, whether it's kind of CDPs or whatever, but it's the integration of that planning and performance piece, which is going to be key. Got it. That's where tools like Marmite come into play, I guess. Which is it's, it's, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly that. And I think that's where the smart money is. I mean, we, we talk to organizations around, not everyone, everyone kind of gets bogged down in the Excel spreadsheets and tasks and whether it's Asana, whether it's Monday and having that full visibility of everything that's going on, you can start to kind of individually tackle those pain points. How do you start to create kind of visibility and alignment across organizations? But we talk about things like the Marmind MRM platform as that supercharger. But because it does more than just help you plan better, it brings finance in, it brings all your performance analytics pieces in, and it really kind of creates that end-to-end -end view in a single platform of everything you're doing, everything that's coming up, what it was supposed to do, what's the creative you use, what are the assets, what's your approval process, who's doing what next, and then whether it works or not. And so from an organizational perspective, if you go back to what we're seeing as the biggest pain point in the moment and effectiveness is around changing the ways of working, one of the biggest ways that you can do that is increase the visibility of what you're doing in the first place. And which is where marketing resource management comes into play, which is yeah. super interesting. So, so with Marmine, I've been working for Marmine now for almost three years. And within that, within that time, I've seen it, the, the need... For, on the market has grown or the demand let's call it from a demand generation perspective yeah. the demand has grown massively within those 24 months right like yeah. or not 24 months so 24 to 28 months right it's been like it's been insane how quickly mrm or marketing resource management has gone from something that people have never even heard of to yeah. we need an mrm solution and we need it yesterday so <laughs> what happened like what are you seeing on the ground on the client side what's your impression um 
I think there's there, I think there's there's a lot of transformation going on at the moment in big businesses. And we are, what are we? I, I forget I forget where we are in terms of how many years post-COVID are we, which is kind of the latest measure. Three, of two or three, side. two or three, yeah. <laughs> but but you know, organizations have now gone through that two, three year recovery post-COVID, and business models have changed. The money to deliver the goals that organizations have had is changing so people are looking for smarter ways to work and better ways to kind of understand what you're doing why it is and what's the value that you're creating and and i think that's where the smart money is then on okay where where are the biggest pain points the biggest pain points are your ceo doesn't always know what your marketing function is doing all the different elements of it. You know, we've worked with organizations where the CFO is having three different pods from marketing coming up and saying, we understand you've got this business challenge and our pod is the one that can help you do it. And you go, well, well, you know, where's the credibility with that? So, So if the role of marketing is to create value for the organization and you want to put your money into the biggest lever that you can pull to drive value, then you've got to create credibility within the organization that it will do that. So marketing needs to really align and be clear around what are the one, two, thing, three things that it's doing and take the organization on the journey. And that's where things like the MRM platforms can really come in because it suddenly opens the doors. If anyone can look at a plan that marketing's doing so everything's there you're not hiding things it's visible you're being open it creates more of a partnership with the organization then that's got to be a good thing because that creates visibility and it creates stronger working relationships so i think so i think that the reason why we're seeing it is because marketing can't operate on its own if it has been there and the challenge of transformation in cost cutting in delivering the next phase of growth you know covid plus three or whatever years we are on people need to work smarter organizations need to work smarter yeah it makes perfect sense and as well as that it's also it's it's harder than to just which was the old age old adage to you know just pause the marketing budgets you know uh, yeah. it, it, you know just stop okay we need to cut back and cost marketing immediately cut marketing and yeah. if you're able to prove it's like, well, hold on a sec. Did you realize that all of these things are happening in marketing? And if we yeah. pause that, then you're going to see this knock-on effect because we're currently seeing this as a result from all of the things that marketing are working on. And these are all of the things that are leading towards those results. Yeah. If you take that away, you're going to see a problem there. Yeah. And yeah. Before, you didn't have that type of visibility, as you said, right? No. And, and so if you can tie that up and talk about marketing in terms of the value that it generates but also the risk that it helps negate for the business. Because if you don't do all of this brand advertising, it's hard to recruit, it's hard to require, it's harder to retain. So the risk of running the business is greater. Then suddenly you're speaking a language of the business, which everyone understands. Absolutely. And then it's, it's, it's interesting as well. You're also seeing other tools launch onto the market, like marketing mix modeling is also something that's that's grown quite rapidly over the past couple of years as well, right? I've worked with a company for a while called Selfwater based out of Finland, right? And okay. they've seen some massive growth as well over the past couple of years, which was a topic that would have put people to sleep, being very honest with you, a couple of years ago. But but yeah. now, again, to see the effectiveness of the of all of your advertising channels in one spot and then being able to pump that as well into something like an MRM tool is very powerful as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is exactly that. And I think, you know, people at marketing mixed modeling has been around a long time. You know, I, I, I was in media agencies 15 years ago and it's being promoted as a media efficiency, media, you know, performance tool. MMM, MMM programs are brilliant at creating alignment across organizations around the levers that you pull, as you say. But it's the, it's, it's the conversation that that enables, which is the bit that needs to happen. So if I take money away from here, what's going to happen? What's if I can happen? put money into here, where do we get to? Not this year, but next year and the year after that as well. And suddenly it's just a game-changing conversation. I think that's why, you know, as you say, kind of growth of MMM is hugely important. It's, it's driven by, you know, people can be less, have to be less wielded to the short-term digital attribution modeling, which has been, you know, quite, quite trendy and popular recently. And it's, you know, it's lifting people up. 
in terms of how they look across an organization, which has to be a good thing. Absolutely. And Nick, look, we're after running out of time here. I could probably go on about this all day. It's been really, really interesting chatting with you about it. Where can people find you, Nick? GoIgniteConsulting.com is our main website. Go to theignitionroom.com as well and have a look at our community. Come and join our community. It's free. You'll find like-minded people in there. Um, and then as any good business owner, we're on LinkedIn. We're all across all the available channels should you want to find us. Excellent. Well, Nick, we'll make sure that that's shared and everything in the description as well. Nick, Amazing. thank you so much for coming on. It's been uh, it's been really great speaking with you and uh, hopefully we can have you on you. again. Thank you. Cheers. Super. Guys, this has been another episode of This Is Your Captain Speaking. Tune in again next week for more great content. Nick, thanks a million. See ya. Cheers.